about to go back 20 years, ain't we? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, what's up? This is my team, Cleese, and I am here with Running Back. I am downtown Houston, Texas for the Final Four. I am about to go inside and interview the Hall of Famer, Dwayne Wade. And he had one of the most historic runs you can ever have in college basketball. His Final Four run was incredible. I mean, they beat Pitt. They had some tough teams, man. They beat uh, Missouri. He had a tough game against Holy Cross, and then he topped it off beating Kentucky. That game there, ooh-wee. D-Way finish up with a triple-double. I'm talking 29 points, 11 rebounds, 11 assists. So this is a conversation you do not want to miss. And I want to thank 19-9 and Victory for helping us put this whole thing together. 2023 Hall of Famer, D-Way, running back, Final Four, Houston, Texas. Let's go. From Shot Town to Flint Town, you know, D Way, welcome to Running Back, baby. Thank you, sir. Yeah, and congratulations. People can call you Flash, D Way. They can call you many things. Now they got to call you Hall of Famer, baby. <laughs> I like that one. Yeah, that's yeah. Favorite. That's my favorite one right there. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, so congratulations on that. All right, so we're going we gonna to keep it college, you know. But uh, before we even get there, I got to ask you about your style first. Because you do it, man. You know, when you come out, people look at you like, I mean, you stay fresh to death, Thank you stay you, clean, and yeah. How was the, the attire in college? That's what I want to know. Was it was the swagger like this in college, or what's up with that? In my mind. <laughs> <laughs> not in the execution. Uh, not at all. I, you know, I was limited to yeah. what I could, you know, could you could could you know go out and buy and, and put on my body. So no, it, one thousand percent, it was not that way. But I always had in my mind, I'm like, ooh, one day yeah. I want to I want to dress a certain way. I want to smell a certain way. Like I just always had this essence of what a, what what kind of man I wanted to to look like and yeah. be. Um, a lot of it came from my dad and my like you know my my, uh, my uncles and stuff like that. But no, not in college, man. I I got the, I had this one suit that I took down there. I had one <laughs> suit. It was my suit from prom, and I took it down to Marquette because like I knew we had like. Uh, you know, you got to take those photos before the season yeah. and everything. And so I was like, all right, well, I'm going to take this suit. And I had two shirts. I had like a, a black, like, silk shirt to go underneath. And I had like the gray <laughs> one with the tie. I had, I could flip it. Yeah. And exactly. if you see any photos of me back in college, you would see me wear that uh, suit on the bench when coach made me dress up. <laughs> when I set out my first year, you would see me have it in the, cla in the class pictures and everywhere, man. Yeah. One suit. That's funny. If people forget about how tight it was in college. Like, I had... Uh, a white shirt, two white shirts, and I had some corduroys. And when we went on the road, we had to dress up. And uh, man, I would shake them out, corduroys, <laughs> you know, yeah, uh, pants. Yes, sir. And we was rolling, so it was tight. So you had the vision, you just needed the money. Yeah, yeah, I needed the, yeah, I needed, okay. the, I needed the money, and I needed, I ain't have the total vision. <laughs> you know what I mean? I needed somebody else, the other people to help me with the vision. Yeah. But I knew that one then. I knew okay. I, you know, I knew I wanted to, like even my suit that I chose to go to, like that I had down there, it wasn't like a black suit. It was this, like this silver, you know what I'm saying? All silver suit with gaiters. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? I've always been on the flair side of things. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's what's up. Now, as far as music, Take you back down that way. Do you remember what like music you were listening to back then? Like? Back then, um, let's see, Nelly. Nelly. And the Saint Lunatics. They had a run. Back then. Ooh. Yeah, they had a run. They had a run. That was yes, my sir. vibes. I mean, Bad Boy always. You know, Bad Boy was doing it back then. Mm -hmm. Missy Elliott. Yeah, yeah. Missy was. Yeah, ooh, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, rem I remember uh, T J Cummings. Shout out to T J Cummings. T J Cummings and I played together in A U. Mm -hmm. right, we played for the Illinois Warriors with Larry Butler. TJ goes to UCLA, I go to Marquette, I'm red shirting, right? And I'm watching the first game UCLA is playing. And TJ, you know, he scores like 20 something, have a big game, whatever. And then I never hear TJ again. Mm -hmm. and next time I see TJ, he's in a Missy Elliott video Ooh. as the lead man. Uh, and I'm he, like, he was winning. Oh, he was winning. <laughs> he was in Cali. Yeah. He's in a Missy Elliott video. Yeah. And I was like, oh. That's the life, right? Yeah, you live it. But uh, yeah, it was around that era, man. You know, just listen to all those. I mean, I, I was young too, man. I loved Bow Wow back then, right? Yeah, like, yeah, he was the man. Yeah, so so Def yeah. was. So yeah, all that kind of stuff. I'm sure yeah. it's, it's others. Obviously, like I'm, you know, I'm a big fan of music. I'm a big like I love. If I love an artist, yeah, I I, I love you, and I might not listen to other artists because I love you. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like Lil Wayne was yeah. big at that time in my life. Like oh, a young yeah. Lil Wayne growing up at the same time, around the same age as a as a young Lil Wayne. Yeah. 
Okay, that's Cash money up. was crazy. So. Yeah, yeah, they had to run too. Yeah, they had to run. So it's all yeah. these like runs in your 2000s, in your college days, whatever that you remember, like these yeah. individuals you like. That's what's up. Soundtracks. Yeah, okay, now so you talking, okay, high school. You killing, you putting in work, um, not being really noticed yeah. uh, like that. You mentioned the Illinois Warriors. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, you played with D Miles. Played with you know, D Miles. He was the top dog, and uh, was it Lottich? It was another Matt Lottich. Lottich that went to Stanford, yeah, right? Went to Stanford. So you playing uh, AAU, and I and I know you used to always check the other team's best players mm -hmm. uh, back then. So <laughs> yes, <I did. laughs> how was that experience? You know, playing with the Illinois Warriors and just you know enjoying the AAU side of it. It was great, bro. I only played, that was the only year I played AAU. Going into your senior year, right? Going into my senior year. Yeah. So I didn't have a lot of exposure on the circuit. Um, and that was at the time where I was getting pretty good. And I did feel like I needed to like step my, my game up, like who I was playing against. I needed mm -hmm. to see where, where I stacked up against better players. Yeah. And Larry Butler came to my house. i never forget, you know, asked me to play on the team. And I just immediately said, I can't do it because I can't pay for the hotels. I can't pay for the food. I can't pay for the travel. Right. We just ain't got it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so it became a collective effort to get me to go play. Like, you know, people putting their money together to make yeah. sure I have money to go on this trip. But going out there, man, being able to compete against the best, compete against the Omar Cooks of the world, the, uh, the uh, yeah, Andre yeah. Barrett's of the world, like all these guards that are like, from New York, for that had these big names. Uh, play with guys like you said, Matt Lottis, Brett Melton who went to Illinois, Darius Miles that went to the NBA, TJ Cummins that went to UCLA, so forth and so on. And yeah. it was it was what I needed to kind of just see where I stacked up. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. playing in my backyard around the hood and the local guys, like I was good. <laughs> but I needed to go out and see where I stacked up. Yeah. Now, as uh, far as recruiting, what school, I know you end up going to Marquette, we'll get there. Was there a school that you always grew up wanting to go to? Yeah, Michigan. Michigan. Yeah. Michigan. Michigan. I, I got a, I got a <laughs> six six that the five five. First of all, I don't like your answer, <laughs> no, but you don't. it's okay. I can deal with it. But I got a six six um, that the five five has something to do with. One thousand percent. One thousand. You know, obviously, I didn't know nothing about schools. You just, you just go with what you know, where the eyes go, and you know where your heart go. And it was a five five. It was a story of all those guys and just the coolness of them. Mm -hmm. And they just made Michigan look like a place you wanted to, you know, be. Now, mind you, I didn't get no Michigan offer. <laughs> So it wasn't even an opportunity to go yeah. to Michigan. Uh, but that was kind of in my mind when I started playing. I was like, all right, I'm going to Michigan. You know, you don't yeah. know as a kid. You just think you can say it and you're going to do it. Right. I'm like, I'm going to Michigan. Yeah. And then I, 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 I reality started setting in early that Michigan wasn't on the hit <laughs> <laughs> for what my talents were. <laughs> right. Well, and I probably get in trouble for saying this, but. I wanted to go there too for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> like the Fab Five. The five, like, five. Oh, come on, we yeah. all followed them. You know, sure. How do you not? Um, recruiting process start. Uh, probably not getting a ton of offers. Um, but yet, here come Marquette, you know, throw you this offer. Yeah. You know? And yeah. how was that? You know, Coach Cree come through and they offer you a scholarship to go to Marquette. Yeah, bro. It was great. I mean, I think I did probably three or four. I had uh, Illinois State, uh, I think Tom Richards. Uh, yeah, Tom Richardson was the coach um, at that time. And then I had Bradley University. Bradley, yeah. I had DePaul and I had Marquette. Wow. That was my four. And um, Bradley was long shot. Mm -hmm. Illinois State gave a chance. DePaul came to my house on a visit and Pat Kennedy was the head coach. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget Pat Kennedy came in and said, you know, a lot of things, but he said, yeah, you know, we don't see you playing until your junior year. Oh. And I was like, my junior year? <laughs> Well, that's out. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and so now I got Marquette and like Coach Cream come in and it's a way different energy when he comes into the house. Mm -hmm. he's, he's talking about my education. He's talking about, you know, the betterment of me becoming a man and, you know, all the things that he's willing to do. And he's not even talking about basketball. Yeah. He's talking about all the other things around basketball. Mm -hmm. And so Immediately, I could have committed right there. I was just trying to hold my cards in. It ain't like I had a lot of them, but I was just like, oh, okay, that sounds good. But inside, I was like, this is where I'm going. Because right. I looked at a man who didn't know me, who came into the hood and wanted something for me. Yeah. Didn't, wow. didn't just talk about, hey, I don't want you to come in. You can score 20 a night. You can get these shots. You got this position. It wasn't about basketball. And I appreciated that. Yeah. So you you, you, you accept the scholarship, <clears throat> Prop 48. For people that don't know, you, you don't get a chance to Playing the game, nope. you don't travel with the team. Nope. Uh, you just practicing. 
how like how did you stay like mentally focused and stay engaged? Yeah. Because that got to be tough, you yeah, know, especially tough. for a young fella <laughs> during it, going through that. It was tough. Uh, everybody else, you know, like I needed everybody, man. I needed yeah. I needed all my teammates to lift me up. Like my coaches, my coach, they would call me from the road when they had a game, when they won. They'd, fa- they'd call me, one no FaceTime at the time, but everybody get on speakerphone and they'd make me feel like I was a part yeah. of the team still, even though I wasn't with the team, right? Mm-hmm. Um, anytime coach got a chance to in the media, he would pub me up, even though I wasn't playing for a whole year. Yeah. Just the whole community was all in it with me. The, the, the athletic director, the president of school, like everybody was championing me. Um, and they gave me so much, you know, like, comfort to be able to be successful both in the classroom and on the court because I had people rooting for me. Yeah. Now, I come from the hood, bro. Right. You ain't got a lot of people rooting for you in the hood. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. to be in a space where people actually wanted me to succeed, I was like, and so that made me work harder. Yeah. That made me, you know what I'm saying, want to do the, you know, the things that was uncomfortable because I was like, man, they believe in me. Yeah. And so just that support from everybody and obviously family back home, everybody kept me in it. Yeah. And the, the final thing for me was when I had my son. When I had Zaire, that's what it really just, it really locked me into, you know, this is, once again, this is bigger than you, dog. Yeah. You gotta, it's a bigger purpose for you. Right. And if all you gotta do is get up every day and work hard, then get up every day and work hard and right. let the chips fall as they may. And that's yeah. what I did. Right, whole different type of focus. Whole different type yeah. of focus. <laughs> yeah, so your freshman year, put on 20 pounds. Yeah, 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 you put that muscle, muscle on. Yeah, 20, <laughs> okay, let me, 20 pounds of muscle. Yeah. Now you totally different player, I'm yeah. sure, at this point. You know, you go through that uh, season, you put on 20 pounds of muscle. Yeah. Whole different ball guy. Yeah, I didn't lift weights in high school. Yeah. I know nothing about weights. <laughs> we did push-ups and sit-ups and, you know what I'm saying, I ran track. Like, we didn't lift weights. Yeah. So I went to school about a buck 80, mm. you know, and then after that year I was 210. Like, I got to, like, 210 at some yeah. point. I got actually a little bit too big. I was like, yo, I'm around here swole. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, man, it was a total different, like, game for me. I was already someone who liked contact, but now I can I can give contact. I can't right. just – I'm not just accepting it. Yeah. And I'm big enough to give contact. So yeah. it, it took my whole my confidence <laughs> to a whole nother level just by, you know, committing to the weight room. Like, I went to Marquette. I couldn't lift 135 pounds five times. Wow. I, I was just a hooper. I wasn't – I didn't have that strength. And so I had to build to that, to where now I can go to the draft three years later. I'm in there 185 a couple of times, like 17 times. Like, y'all good? <laughs> you know what I'm yes, saying? I, yeah. So the yeah. work that you got to put in is not just on the court. It was the work away from the court. That full year, I had to develop like a new body, yeah. <laughs> a new yeah. mind um, before, I, before I became a player in college. Mm, man, that's cold, man. And even like the red shirt year sitting out, or whatever the case is, it ain't so bad if you take advantage of it. Right. Yeah, and it seemed like you locked full in. Advantage. Uh, I did. I mean, I, it, I didn't. I didn't have a choice. Yeah. No, people around me was not gonna allow me to fail. That's the yeah. one thing. Like I was the first Prop 48 in Marquette school history, and I might might be the, the last one. I don't know yeah. if there's been another one. And so everyone was invested into. It. Yeah. I, it wasn't just me going up there, and I was just out there by myself. No. Yeah. If I if I was late for class, they was on me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The teachers, yeah. like it was, yeah. the, everybody was together. And so yeah. I, like it wasn't that I couldn't fail, but it was an environment that was set up for me to succeed if I did all the things that I needed to do. Right. Right. If I listened yeah. and, and stuff like that. So that's what I did, man. I just came in like no ego, no nothing. I'm here to learn. I'm here to listen. Whatever I got to do to get to my ultimate goal is what I'm going to do. Yes, and sir. I did that. Okay. Now that <clears throat> you didn't play games. So now that summer. Uh, Coach Cream put you on a traveling team. Yeah, he did. And think you went to Italy? Yeah, was it Bill was Van Gundy coaching that team? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you go to Italy. How was that experience? Incredible, bro. Yeah. Um, one of my teammates, uh, John Harris, uh, he went with me. Coach was like, yo, we did another player on the team because yeah. I never <laughs> – from Robbins, <laughs> Milwaukee, I, I haven't went nowhere. I haven't traveled nowhere. Like, right. you know what I mean? Uh, probably in AU, Kentucky was the furthest place we went. Like, yeah. And so going over to Italy, we went to Florence. Like, we went all through Italy, man, and we were traveling. And I was experiencing things that I never experienced. I was experiencing cultures that I never experienced before. I'm watching kids at 12 years old drink wine at dinner. I'm like, this is different. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Um, I'm playing around the world and I'm hooping and like I'm getting fanfare, but I'm, I'm playing with referees. I'm playing with, uh, I'm practicing two times a day. I'm learning structure. Like I'm learning all these things. And one of the craziest things about that, to jump ahead but not jump too far ahead, mm-hmm. is Bill Van Gundy being our head coach. 
Stan Van Gundy being his son, who later coached me in Miami. Bill Van Gundy ran that two months or a month, whatever long we was out there, like the Miami Heat training camp. Mm. And mm. all he would talk about during practice is Pat Riley, the Miami Heat. This is how they do it. Yeah. Not knowing later in life I'll be drafted to the Miami <laughs> Heat and I'll be coached by Stan Van Gundy. Wow. Just crazy how everything happened, bro. And so to be able to go on that traveling team and get some experience mm -hmm. to play, like it helped me so much when I came back and finally had my eligibility in the next year. Yeah, getting that game experience. Then yeah. you come back. Let's fast forward to when the season starts. Can I, before you do that, can I, can I, can I, can I do, give an antidote? Do what you do, d First year, I'm, all right, so I'm sitting out. Coach, what Coach Cream would do a lot is he would bring in a lot of people. And so you're bringing in George Foreman. Like George Foreman would come in and talk to us. Bill Russell came and talked to us. Uh, football players, Willie Davis. And then one time he brought in Mateen Cleves. <laughs> he brought in Mateen. And like normally, like the coaches that come, everyone is so politically correct with everything they say. It's buttoned up, it's Mateen came in off the beaten pack, cussing, <laughs> motherfucker, like talking to us like dudes. I'll never forget, we were sitting in that little bitty uh, locker room and you were sitting up there and you was giving us this real spill. Um, and at that time, man, I, I had watched your journey, you know, I watched, you know, the, um, I was a big fan of, of Mo and what you guys created at Mo Peterson. Yeah. And I watched the journey and seen like the leader you was and all these things. So I'm at this space where I'm trying to learn and I'm looking at you as like this, this unbelievable leader. And so I'm every word, I'm like this. <laughs> and you were just, man, I appreciate you for giving us the real, like real game. It wasn't yeah. like no coaches speak. It was from a player to players. This motherfucker, this is how it is. And that's how you, <laughs> and that's how you was talking to us. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, I remember. I remember, dog. Yes, sir. So I appreciate you coming in. And like moments like that, it means so much to players because you don't know what a player is sitting there, what they're going through and what they need. And that's so right. the, what you gave us, what you gave me, yeah. bro, we had a great practice that day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's that appreciate real. That. Yeah, listen, hey, now. Nah. If you're trying to win, tap in. Now, you heard, <laughs> you heard it from the man himself. I yes, played sir. a big part in D-Wade. <laughs> no, but that's cool, man. I'm glad I, I was able to impact. You yeah, know, that, that's love. You yeah, know? I just wanted to share that antidote yeah, right there. I'm glad you, you know, did. That it Michigan makes me, State connection with Tom yeah. Crean and, and appreciate you, you coming did. in. It make me look good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, we get back. First game. You go get 30. Yeah. 30, first, first game out, you go get Some 30. Light. Some light. Huh. Some light. So the confidence at this point got to be here. Sky high. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, on, I'm on top of the roof, fam. Yeah, yeah. I'm sky high. Um, and I know that year I set out, man, I learned so much, you know, and I had, like, got, I guarded Brian Water. You remember Brian Water? Yeah, Brian yes, Water sir. was a tough cover, bro. Mm -hmm. And I had to guard him. Before the Rip Hamilton's and the Ray Islands of the world, I had to guard Brian Water every yeah. day in practice, and he told me up. And so I learned so much in that, that year that I was out once again. And so when I got out there my, my, my freshman year to play, but my yeah. second year in school, bro, it was like, this is easy. Yeah, yeah, Right, right. Yeah. The, the teams we were playing at the time. Like, we were, mm -hmm. my first game was, wasn't against the top teams. It was right. against, you know, the preseason teams or whatever. So, yeah, I came out hitting with 30. Yeah, 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 easy. Just to set the tone. Okay, I love it. Now, you, <clears throat> Alaskan shootout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now it's really on. Now it's really, really on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, because you got, what, Tennessee in it, Gonzaga, and Indiana, Indiana. I want to say. Mm -hmm. D-Wade, hey, world, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> My yeah. name is D-Wade. <laughs> 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 okay. Yes, sir. Now, that run, you know, yeah. talk a little bit about that, that, that Alaska shootout tournament. Yeah, bro. Um, so we played the two games before we went over there, and I, you know, I was – Numbers was crazy, mm -hmm. but we also knew that it was just there was warm up games versus like a Chicago State or versus you know someone a little less yeah. or competition. But now we're going to play against um, you know uh, Vincent Yarbrough, uh, you know uh, Dan Dickow, Jared Jeffries. Yeah, like we're going to play against names now. Yeah, guys that I've been sitting out watching these that have great you know careers and have success. Mm -hmm. And so I never forget, bro. We we in the first game versus Tennessee, and the first couple of minutes it felt like we were just we was in over our head. The game was moving fast. They was talking shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's real. Like, it's on. It's real. They got two guys that projected as pros, and they talking, and we out here. We in Alaska. We ain't in our comfort zone. <laughs> but I'm from, I'm from the city. I'm from the hood. Okay. And I don't Get really, quiet. like, I'm quiet, but I don't really play those games. Yeah. And so I'm like, oh, okay, this is what we doing? And I just, I blanked out. Mm. Next thing you know, bro, 30 and 10. <laughs> <laughs> The NT on yes, sir. And it started from there, man. I remember after that game, at this time, if Dick Vitale said your name, if Dickie V said your name, and any 
any Ram, you were, you were, you were that guy. Yes, sir. And so I remember after that game, man, you know, winning a game that you know, we didn't know if we could win, mm -hmm. pulling it off. Uh, feeling ourselves a little bit, but understanding like we still got Indiana, we still got Gonzaga. Yeah. But I remember our team was around the TV watching the games, um, the next game that was, that was played the next day. Um, and Dick Vitale was talking about the players in the, in the, um, in the tournament. And he was like, I want y'all to remember this name. He's a diaper dandy, baby. Yeah. And he said, Dwayne Wade from Marquette. And if you would have seen the way that my teammates jumped on me, like the the love that they have for him saying my name, but you know, knowing that this is for all of us. Yeah, bro, yeah. it was love. We were jumping around the room, man, celebrating, running down the hallways, and that was just because he said because we were on the map. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And we had put a stamp in it, and so that that just that bred that that confidence is breeding into and bred into everything for the rest of that tournament yeah. where game winner versus Indiana. Did that. Yes, sir. <laughs> Made it look easy. Game done. <laughs> Next game. And, you know, and then meeting Dan Dick Allen Gonzaga in the championship, man, it was like, we here. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so I just continued to try to, I, I knew at that time I started feeling like, okay, what I have is a little different than what I'm seeing out here. Like my instincts, uh, my ability to be able to read the game, like all these things I started seeing that I had stuff that other players didn't have. And I just I put it to play right away. I just started yeah. utilizing it on the floor and it turned into a success right away from me. Yeah, and you mentioned Dick Vitale, and I want people, I want the college, the real college basketball fans to really understand. If Dickie V was talking about you back then, yes, sir. you was the, you was the real deal. Yep. That's a big deal to have Dickie V putting his stamp on you That's back the then. That's the stamp. In college basketball, Dickie V was the stamp. Yeah. He said your name, <laughs> we talking about the draft now, baby. <laughs> you know 100%. We, we on the watch list now. Yes, sir. Yeah. So after that, the last uh, shootout tournament. I think you had a conversation with Coach Cream, mm -hmm. and he pulled you to the side and told you, <clears throat> your life is about to change. Mm -hmm. um, so things are going to be a little different now. Yeah. How was that conversation? Yeah, man, we, uh, <clears throat> we're 5-0. and We're coming off this championship in Alaska. We were headed to, we were walking on the plane, and Coach grabbed me you know, as everybody's walking on the plane or getting ready to go on the plane to set me down. And he said that. He said, your life that, as you knew it before, we got here. It's going to be totally different when we land. I not really know what he was saying. really didn't understand it. I never had a big fanfare like that. Yeah. You know? uh, so I didn't know what he was saying. He was like, we, we're possibly going to be ranked. Maybe the first time we were ranked in however many years it was at that time. Uh, we'd been in the top 25, you know, AP. And he was just breaking it all down to me. And he was like, but I want you to continue to have the same approach that, you, that you've always had. Don't let nothing change your approach. Right? You're and right. So he's, but he said it like a father. Right, 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 right. I know Coach <laughs> Green. You know Coach Green. It was like, I was like, yes, yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? No, Coach, I'm not changing. Right. But he wasn't lying. When I got back, I was a household name. You know what I'm saying? And everywhere around campus I go, in the classroom I go in, it was different. Yeah. You know what I mean? We were ranked. Yeah. You know, the games became different. Well, now we the team, like, we're not hunting. We've been hunted. Yes. So everything changed immediately, and you know, but I loved it. Yeah, you yeah. Know I was gonna ask I you, loved did, it. did you walk a little different when you got back on campus? Oh, you, know you, know little... you know that chest poke out a little bit. <laughs> you know how we used to walk down, leave your chest lead in the yes. room first. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Yes, so and I, I definitely did because you know every obviously everything I, I everything I've worked for. You know, the sitting out the whole year. You mm -hmm. know, red shirting. Dreaming about these moments, you know what I mean? Praying and asking God to give me the moments where yeah. I can perform and show the world like what I'm really made of. Like I, and I, and I got that opportunity. And every time I've gotten an opportunity, starting back to, at that point, I tried to showcase all those things that I said to myself or I said to God in the room like I'm gonna do and I can do. Oh, that's real. You know, and so yeah. it felt good, bro. Yeah, it felt I, good. I bet it did. Now, season progressed. Um, I think it was Wake Forest. You tear your meniscus. Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah, you tear your meniscus. But you keep playing. Like, I don't think people understand. <laughs> like, you finished the season, man. Yep. A lot of people would have set out. You, you finished playing that season. I took one game off to get all the doctors and everybody look at my knee. Um, and all I wanted to know as an athlete is, you know, can I play? Yeah, yeah. Yada, 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 yada. <laughs> I am 10 games into my first year playing. I just set out a whole year. This hurts. But can I play? Yeah. And Doc said, you will have to have surgery at the end of the season. You can play, but it's going to hurt. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Let's go. Let's go play. <laughs> right. And so I finished the year out, and I did have moments where, it, like, if I made a jump stop or something, my knee would just, I'd just run to the bench. The yeah. pain in my knee would hurt so bad. Oof. Um, yeah. But I still, I still played, led the team to the tournament. Yep. Um, you know, we obviously we, we got knocked out in the first round. Y'all but was five, and I think lost to lost 12. Lost to 12. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, we were yep. one of those teams. I just wanted to prove I did my homework. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I was trying not to say that. <laughs> but, yeah, man, I played with a torn meniscus uh, my first year from, from game 10 to the end of, to all the way into the tournament until we lost. Mm. Yeah, and you, you get through the tournament. Now you got to get your surgery. Yeah, I and I think that summer, it was an issue, it was an uh, incident well, your team had to run. Uh, the and, team did his research. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The team had, you are being punished. And D. Wade is kind of feeling himself a little bit at yeah, this point. Yeah. And uh, Coach Cream flies back in. I heard, I think this happened about one or two in the morning. Yeah, it was like two in the morning. This interaction with you and Coach Cream. Yeah. Talk to me about that. Yeah, well, so we, we showed up a little late for class. Like, I showed up a little late. Maybe if his class was at 8, maybe rolled in by 8.05. <laughs> That's a no-no. That. That's a no-no. And a couple other teammates rolled in a little late, right? So the assistant coach was there, and they was like, we running. I'm like, man, I ain't running. <laughs> coach ain't here. I ain't running. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling myself. Yeah. And so they make us run, and I'm running a little bit. Then I stop. I'm like, man, I'm going to the pros, man. Forget this. I'm, I'm feeling myself. Yeah. So I leave. Go back to my dorm. Coach oh, you Cream. just leave? I left. Well, oh. they kicked me out eventually. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get out. Okay. Coach Crean is off on the Final Four. And we're back doing, you know, we're back into school. He's off on the Final Four. I know he's not there. I get a knock on my door at 2 in the morning. Let's go. Coach mm. want to see you in his office. I'm scared <laughs> as... <laughs> and I, so, I, so I walk in the office, and Crean is sitting there at his desk. It's black in the office. And his, his uh, obviously his room is the only one with lights on. Everywhere else is black. I've never been at the office this time. I've never seen it like this. Yeah. So I say it was scary. <laughs> I walk in there, he got this, like, he ain't even looking at me, but he got this look on his face as he's looking down. You could see it, his nose and eyes and everything. I'm like, ooh. And he, he sits me down and he proceeds to tell me that he was just like, pretty much, like, he's like, you're not good enough. Mm. You think you're fucking good enough to go to the NBA? You're not good enough. You're not ready. You're not mature enough. Like, he broke me down. Wow. And, and, he was, and he was saying, he was like, you didn't come here to pretty much half-ass things. You came here to leave here. You know, like we always talked about getting my degree or we talked about the man I wanted to be, the basketball player I wanted to be. And he was like, you're not that mm. in so many words, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we yeah. had a standoff. We had a little stand-up, look at each other, <laughs> kind of standoff moment. <laughs> we did. Because <laughs> I was feeling myself. And yeah. I, was a, I was a 20 um, 20 year old man. They're going into a, a young man. Yeah. And, but he humbled me very quickly too. And I respect him so much. And, and then I went, so after that, I kind of calmed down. I went back to work because he was right. Yeah. I, I was, uh, I was supposed to have knee surgery after that. So I knew that my knee was going to be a little messed up. And I wasn't a player and the person I wanted to be. So like, even though the NBA, there was an NBA talk about me sneaking into the first round or mm -hmm. maybe even second round. But when you come from where I come from, that sound good. Oh yeah. You oh, like, yeah. I got, I got a kid. Like oh, that sound good. But right. <clears throat> he humbled me, and uh, made me go back, to, go back to my dorm and get myself straight. <laughs> and I did. <laughs> I could only imagine what that walk was like. Bro, bro I was nervous, bro. Yeah. I was scared. Yeah, but yeah. good for him that humility, man. Like we need that. Not what you, not people that's still gonna tell you what you want to hear, what you need to hear. What you need to hear. Yeah, I, I need to hear it because I wasn't ready. You know, what I mean, I let I let the the noise on the outside or what everyone was telling me, I let that start filling up my my, my oxygen. Yeah, right. That became my oxygen in a mm -hmm. sense, and so I needed to be humble. Right. So you get through that, get the surgery. All right. Now the season come back around. You know, you playing that season. And I'm uh, ready for, and I'm, I'm there when the season starts after knee surgery. Yeah, you ready. Know, I, didn't, I started the season. I started training camp. I did all that. That's crazy. Yeah. So you back. <clears throat> now you, you guys are playing, playing good. Um, you're going through the season, up and down a little bit, yeah. but you guys finally start towards the end of the year catching your stride. Yep. Um, playing great. Uh, I think you had a hiccup in the conference tournament. Uh, you might have got a little upset. Yeah, we that. got beat first round. Like, yeah. First seed, lose to the AC. Yeah. Did that... Wake, wake the monster up. Yeah, because that week of practice was hell. Yeah. You know about that. Yes, that, sir. That Tom Izzo put that bubble. Yeah. Put that bubble on the rim. Yeah. That's Ooh, what that was. That, that was bubble that on the rebound. rim week. Ooh, that, that rebound drill. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, it was like, 
It, but we needed it mm -hmm. because it refocused. Mm -hmm. You know, once again, like we got, we started feeling ourselves. We the number one seed. You know, we feeling good about ourselves. Conference champs. I'm the conference player of the year. I'm the conference defensive player of the year. We got yeah. coach of the year. We got six men of the year. We got every freshman of the year. We got everything. Right. And we go into the first round of the conference tournament, and um, UAB smashes. Mm. And so. Humble. Yeah, yeah, humble pie. All yeah, right. But, humble came out. Well, woke up the dogs, yeah. you know, now you're going into the tournament. Um, how exciting was that? You know, to go into the NCAA tournament with a whole different mind frame. Now you you a whole totally different player than you were the year before. Yeah. Um, so we end up getting a three seed, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, obviously we, our goal was to try to get a one seed, but because of our loss in the tournament, they ended up pushing us down to a three seed. And so we actually went in with a little chip on our shoulder being a three seed. Like, nah, we better than that. Yeah. Um, but also, too, because the year before, we lost as a fifth seed. Yeah. So we went in with, with that in our minds as well. Right. And it was challenging early, early on. Our first game was against Holy Cross. Holy Cross, yeah. We barely won that game. Diener. If, if it's not for Travis Diener scoring like 29. 29 it was. 29, right? Yeah. If it yeah. wasn't for Diener scoring 29, I was in foul trouble. Mm -hmm. um, so I couldn't really get into the groove of the game. I think I ended up scoring like 15 points and doing some other stuff. But Diener carried us. Yeah. And Diener before the game wasn't even probably going to play because he had planner. Ah, and he had, and he that's had, nasty. And he had to get like an injection or something in his foot. But he ended up playing. And the reason we won the game, scoring 29 points and leading us to that win. Ooh. So the first game in the tournament as a three seed, it almost, <laughs> it almost went bad. <laughs> right. <laughs> it went bad. Yes, sir. But we overcame it, yeah. You get through that. Next game, Missouri. Missouri, it's on. overtime. They, they got a good team. Yep. Yeah. Shout out to Coach Quinn. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah. Uh, he was the head coach, but he had uh, Arthur Johnson, uh, Ricky Paulding. Paulding. Yeah. You know, guys that I knew and I grew up playing with a little bit. And it so, was Detroit boys. Yeah, Detroit boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they yeah, had swagger. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> and um, and you know what? And they also had. Um, he's the owner of the Denver Nuggets right now, uh, Kroenke. Mm-hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. I, that's who actually I guarded. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I guarded Jay. So uh, they had a good team. And yeah. we, we, you know, obviously battle all the way through. We wound up going to overtime. And overtime is where we separated ourselves. I think uh, Steve Novak hit about uh, three or four threes or something like that in overtime. We went perfect from the field. You know, I was doing my thing. And we went up winning that game yeah. and moving on to what, Sweet 16? Yes, sir. Stat line 24 points, eight rebounds, seven assists, by yeah, the way. Yeah, I did my thing. Yes, sir. You did. You did it. The next game. Pitt, and they play hard. It was tough. That that's a dog fight. That was the toughest game that we had played up until that, to the eight, UAB mm -hmm. and Pitt. Okay. The toughest games that we played on that run. Yeah. Um, and they had some guards uh, that you know they had Brandon the Knight. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember. I never remember the point guard was Brandon Knight's brother. Yeah. And then they had this other guard. I can't remember his name. He's a lefty or something. Mm -hmm. Anyway, they had guards. Yeah. And it was a challenge for us, bro. Like, mm -hmm. that first half, they gave us everything we can ask for. I had two points. I was struggling. Mentally, I was gone. And I'll never forget that game because at halftime, the whole halftime was at me. Coach didn't speak to nobody else. <laughs> he just spoke to me. Yeah. But it was the first time that he ever uttered the words since, I, since that moment of that meeting at 2 in the morning. Mm -hmm. It was the first time he ever uh, uttered the words the NBA to me again. Wow. And he said to me, he said, son, if this is your last college game, and I was like, oh, shit, coach, you... Because I didn't want to have a conversation with him no more because, of course, I'm thinking about, like, a little bit of the NBA talk is there, so I'm, I'm yeah. kind of thinking about it. Right. And he kind of was like, son, like, you're putting too much pressure on yourself. If this going to be your last college game type conversation, and he was at me, and I was just like... It just, I don't know why something about what he said just kind of like relaxed me because I was like, Coach, no, I'm a pro. Right, right. He know I, he know I'm a pro, right? Yeah, yeah. And so I went out there and scored like twenty something in the second half. <laughs> yes, you did. Went to work on them dudes. Yeah, you finished twenty. <laughs> you had twenty two. Yeah, yeah, yeah yes, sir. Yeah, did. Go. Went to work. Yes, sir. F pulled it out. Now this <laughs> next game, y'all playing Kentucky. Yeah. Big bad Kentucky. Yeah, 27 in a row. Yeah. Y'all don't have a chance in, in heck. And no story we have a chance. To win this game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> to win this game. Is that something that you took personal? You know what I mean? Shy town. I mean, like, this, this is what we do. Yeah. Like, these are those moments. This is where I really can define myself. What was your mindset going into that game? They were just in our way. Yeah, yeah. Like, we knew who they were, but... To us, they were just another opponent in our way. Mm -hmm. You know, like, did we know the names more than other, other teams? Yeah, Keith Bogans, was the, he was the guy. Yeah. Um, they had a lot of guys. 
And so our mentality was prepare for the game. We're gonna, we know we're going to be ultra prepared. We got to match their toughness. Mm -hmm. We got to match their energy. But we have what they don't have. And we knew we had something that they didn't have. We had, man, I had a lot of shooters around me. Yes, sir. I had guys that could stroke that thing. Mm -hmm. And so I was very confident coming in to where I, the contrasts of our games, that if we play our game right, that our game is better than their, their game, if right. we play our game. Right. Now, maybe bullheaded in that thought, but I remember warming up before the game, and I remember looking down at Kentucky, and they looked like pros. Bro, they, you know how, how pros, you got the snaps up, you got just the bottom two snaps, you got these open, you got the yeah. top snap, they got all the fresh kicks. They moving like pros. They're yes, not really sir. warming up. They warm muscles like this. Our shit is, we got to touch the line, go in forward. Like, it's different. Yeah. And I just remember looking, I'm like, they cocky. Mm -hmm. Like, they, it just felt cocky to me. And, I, yeah. and so I was just like, okay. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Okay. Yeah. And we brought it to them. We brought it to them. We didn't allow them to bring the fight to us. Right. And so we had them on their heels the entire time. They never could recover yeah. because we took the fight to them. Yeah, you was on one. Yeah. Like that was that. 29, 11, and 11. Yeah. Triple double. Yeah. Yeah, that was nasty, dog. <laughs> <laughs> like, just a, a college basketball fan, that was nasty, dog. Thank you, bro. Yeah, you, you, you went in. Okay, so now you win that game. Final four, man. This is what you dream about. Final four, man. Yeah, bro. You know, everything, as a kid, when you pick up that basketball, you want to play in that final four. I'm playing that four. Now, now, practice is different. You know, you got all these people in the arena, you know, watching the practices. Facts. and. Media from all around the country, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, ain't no closed practices, it's open. Yeah, like yeah. the, the, like, the it's final on TV, four people moment. Watching your practice. Yeah, yeah, how was that, man? It was, it was, <clears throat> what was so amazing about that moment, and I believe in this, man, when you get people to speak certain things in you and you watch it come true, man, it's amazing. I remember we were, we, uh, we played Tulane. Tulane was in our conference in Conference USA. So we went to New Orleans to play Tulane, and on our trip there throughout that, in that year, coach took us to the dome and said, I want us to envision ourselves being mm. back here for the four. So no floor was down. We walked in there, and we was like, where half court going to be? Where this going to be? And so we got a chance to envision ourselves being in there. We walked around and took it in. Mm. And so fast forward, here we are. We mm. are there. We actually in this space that we envision ourselves being in. So just that in itself was beautiful, man. Um, and just to be there and just to, you know, like you said, I, I watched you win the national championship. Yeah. You know what I mean? I watched five, five. I watched all these players in the tournament. Like I watched all my favorite players do, from college to the NBA have this experience. And I'm like, here I am. I get to have this final full moment and experience. And uh, it was beautiful, man. It was beautiful. I met Melo down there. Yeah. First time in Melo. <clears throat> we was out there with the beads on, on, you know, standing down <laughs> in New Orleans on Bourbon Street. Yeah. Hanging yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> It was a vibe. Like, you yes, know, Milwaukee to New Orleans was a different beast. Yes. And so we, we, we probably enjoyed it a little too much. Yeah. Because we ain't perform. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it happens, you know. But, hey, who's, who, 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 who can say they got there? Yeah. You know, you get yeah. to the final four. And I know we got to wrap up, but I do want to ask you this last question. Um, Coach Cream and Marquette, mm -hmm. what does that mean to you? Um, Coach Cream means everything to me, first of all. You know, just, you know, as I talk about, like, I have, I've had strong men in my life that's, that it was put in my life and they've helped me so much, you know, whether it's in something that I wanted to do um, and something I didn't know I wanted to do. Just having these, these men around me. I mean, I have a lot of strong women around me in my business life and everything, but I, I really love to have, like when I had Zaire and I didn't know what to do, Coach Cream was a show that I cried on. Coach Cream was the one that patted me on the back and said, we gonna get through this together. Those words mean something to me. Um, and so, man, he was, he was everything. He wasn't just a coach. He was a friend at times. He was a father figure at times. He was a leader I needed at times. He was the one that got in the little net in my ear all the time talking to shit, but he's also the one who, breed, who bred confidence into me. Mm -hmm. Like, coach would be the kind of coach that you'd be over there and you dribbling by the sideline, he'd be like, take his ass. <laughs> you'd be like, what? <laughs> now you're about to get in my bag. Yes, he sir. Was that, like, he was that guy, so, man, I always give him so much credit for everything he, he meant for me. Even he came to my house and told me that Marquette was going to accept me before he knew Marquette was going to accept me mm. because mm. I was a Prop 48. They wasn't accepting Prop 48. And so he believed in me that much that he was willing to go back to Marquette and say, okay, so I promised this kid that right. is doing, that has, that's struggling in X, Y, and Z, but I promised him that if he commit to us that he's going to be able to come here and get a full scholarship and all these things. And he believed in me, bro. And right. so once again, to be able to have a university, to be able to have a man 
um, that does not come from my community, that does not look like me at all, come from a total different background, come into my, my life and believe in me, I mean, that's, that's, they just propelled me to be able to do all the things that I wanted to do. Love it. Appreciate it, baby. All right, baby. Appreciate Thanks a lot, baby. Appreciate you, dog. Much love. Love.